bikes why couldn't have been this lighter and better and just uh, i don't know i mean it's sad to think that you still going to have to wait a bit longer for that perfect motorcycle that can take on india everything that india has to offer if a bike like that even exists would you look at this it's finally here the kdm 390 adventure finally once again the one bike to rule them all well to rule them all would be to tackle everything india has to offer and to do everything that indians expect from it which is a tall order if you ask me i mean but ktm has been the benchmark internationally with their off road bikes whether it's Correct. rally dirt racing everything in india they changed the game with their road bikes Correct. and nobody has been able to keep up with them at all right so can this then set the benchmark for off road in india There's only one way to answer that and that is this feels like a 390 duke on right. stilts that's a serious deterrent and this is exactly the same ah <sighs> the bike not only really ktm right right uh, well no first the spec sheet i had to get over that it left me a little cold yeah you're right because in terms of suspension travel and ground clearance the himalayan has this beat and both the things are not even that much more compared to a duke just 27 28 mm so yeah and uh, on top of that i think the biggest disappointment for me still remains the 855 mm seat height because the hope has been that this bike would get more indians to experience off road right and with that that's a serious deterrent unless of course you're over 6 feet in height Now new riders will find a little bit of comfort with the electronics on offer. You have traction control, you have ABS with an off-road mode which basically cuts out the rear wheel and just keeps the ABS on on the front wheel. So this makes it a lot safer. In reality, it does cut in rather abruptly and it does so even after you've switched it off, which makes the going in conditions like this quite tricky. So what you're saying is this is not the best off-road bike for beginners. Yeah, I would think that people who have spent some time on smaller motorcycles playing around off-road would be able to make more sense of this and use it better off-road. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> because yes, it is a bit of a handful. We said that this feels like a bigger motorcycle. It is. It is a heavier motorcycle, 177 kilos, and uh, well. The, The seat height itself is not an issue. Once you start riding, you get used to it. I'm five feet six, so yeah, you can get around it. But when you combine the tall seat height with its long wheelbase on tight trails like these, then you will definitely feel the weight of it. You end up working the motorcycle a fair bit. I know there were some concerns about there not being adjustable suspension, but having ridden it, a bigger concern is the lack of suspension travel. Going over this bumpy terrain, the bike was getting tossed around quite a bit. The smaller bumps and potholes that you would get on the road, it would handle quite well. And the other thing is the alloy wheels, right? That was the other sticking point for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, in terms of durability, this is the same spec as you get on the 390. Duke as well. That's not inspiring too much confidence <laughs> to be very honest. But I was clipping and I ended up clipping a couple of nice big rocks on the way. And well, I don't have any bent rims or flat tires, so I think uh, yeah, it's working as of now. The sad news is that uh, spoke wheels are not part of the power parts catalog now or in the next couple of months for sure. And the other concern is that this motor and this gearbox is pretty much in the same identical spec as the Duke and we all know that that doesn't work well at slow speeds. So on slow technical trails I don't think this is going to be all that great. That's exactly it. That's part of the reason why you're ending up working harder on the motorcycle because well under 2000 rpm there's really not that much drive and then at 4000 rpm suddenly you'll get wheel spin. So you end up having to work the clutch or the brakes to keep things a little bit clean. So it's not the ideal uh, power delivery for off-road. Uh, but yeah, if your adventure is about 
finding new places to head out to and with roads that look like this which are broken but you know fairly uh, predictable and fast <laughs> fast being a keyword uh, then you can really enjoy this yeah so pd enough talking about offer why don't you go get a taste of it offer man The bike should be easy enough to pick up though. Hey, you dropped the bike. Part of off-road man. Good thing these crash protectors are standard, huh? Not a scuff on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh why don't you uh, head out and check it out for touring? What do you think? I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Go on, man. See you later. Hmm. It seems I wasn't the only one. Please tell me that they've at least delivered on the adventure touring promise. This feels like a three hundred Duke on right. stilts. And that's a good thing. Yes, it is. I mean, this might sound a little controversial, but the Duke three hundred and ninety. I think it works really well as a touring bike, at least in terms of its motor and mechanicals, because it can hold really great speed on the highway, 100, 120, no problem. It's right. enough grunt for overtakes, and this is exactly the same. It's also got that same manic energy. So if you're in but the does it feel calmer and you know more relaxing? Yeah, I think so because that motor is definitely smoother than on even say your 2017 Duke. Right. And again, the ergos, man, they are just so spot on. For riders of pretty much any height, 6263, no problem. That seat has just so much space. Even my rather large bottom fits on it and gives me enough room to move around. The handlebars, you sit a little further back from them, so you have that sort of it nice, feels nice and roomy. Yeah, though, commanding right? position. They're nice and wide. A lot the, of leverage from the bars. Yeah, and the pegs are not that rear set as well. So it's just a wonderful upright position that is so comfortable and that seat is just perfectly firm. So what they've done with the 390 Adventure is created something that you can travel better with and will accommodate larger riders. So there's a KTM in the 390 family now that they can look at. Uh, but what about range? That was a bit of a sticking point with the Dukes as well. Yep, tank is larger. So I genuinely believe that this is a bike which can do over 300 kilometers on a full tank of gas. And what also helps the towing is that windshield. Now a lot of riders complain that the Duke and the three, the second gen Duke has no wind protection whatsoever. This one has a fairly comprehensive windshield and it can be raised as well. Yeah, but you need tools to do that. <clears throat> you call this uh, Duke on stilts, right? Yeah, because I heard that from... Must have been after I uh, <clears throat> met some corners. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, even before the world had woken up, Karthik was on a double date with the 390 Adventure and a beautiful winding road. I know this is heavier, I know this is taller, so you expect it to be slower. And plus, it, slow. has, yeah, it, has, it has that lazy steering geometry as well, a bigger front wheel. Yeah, sure, that's for stability, that's for off-road, fine, understandable. But the surprising part is, when you do find corners, that wide bar gives you the leverage to actually drop this bike in nice and fast. It's not, of course, Duke fast, but it is fast enough. It is fun enough. It is something that you can enjoy plenty. And those tires, I'm thankful that they perform on the road at least because off-road, they do not. And uh, <laughs> brakes, I've got to give credit to the brakes. Strong bite, which is great considering that this is heavier. And let's not forget, it's packing IMU controlled cornering ABS to up the safety factor and an up and down quick shifter for faster gear changes. That said, we found the quick shifter to be a little inconsistent. What's the 390 Adventure like in terms of heat management inside the city, for pillion comfort and to carry luggage on? All these questions will be answered in the real world test here on Zigwheel, so stay tuned for that. And basically I'm beating around the bush because summing up the 390 Adventure has turned out to be harder than I expected. But don't you think we're being a little too harsh, expecting a little too much from this bike? 
I was expecting KTM DNA that screams of Dakar victories of all those insane videos from the Esberg Rodeo of the Romaniacs. But this is, well... Yeah, it's not soft. that. Yeah. But don't get me wrong, this is a great motorcycle. I mean, if you're into touring on tarmac, on bad roads, on rough roads, this will do really, really well. I completely accept and agree that a lot of people will appreciate this, but we've seen KTM do this in the past, wherein a package just manages to surprise us and deliver on more than just one front. And that's why, for me, this feels... Well, motorcycles like this are decisions you make from the heart. And this one is one that you definitely make from the head. Not only KTM, right? But then imagine instead of adventure, KTM had called this bike the 390 GT. Wouldn't that have made a lot more sense? 